okay so uh, we have been talking about parametric curves right so last time we talked about bezier curves and we also observed certain limitations right so what we basically uh, observed that these bezier curves have somewhat limited local <coughs> control right and with local control we meant that if i change one of the control points of the control polygon then the entire curve changes so i have to compute the entire curve though there is a notion of pseudo local control right where you observe a degree of influence of a particular control point on the curve however as far as the computation is concerned the entire curve needs to be recomputed because there are even small changes beyond the influence of that point to the curve right so there is a limited or no local control in bezier curves so that in fact many a times poses a problem to the user you may design a gross shape of the curve and then you suddenly want a dip in the curve right so you intend to change the position of the control point but what happens the entire curve changes right so a local dent to the curve is not so much possible in bezier construction right and the other thing which we observed is that the degree of the curve is actually determined by the number of control points we have in the bezier polygon right so there is a direct relationship between them so uh, so let's say in order to compensate some of the issues which are for the local control you may want to add control points right but that directly increases the degree of the curve so which may not be always desirable right so in order to overcome let's say some of these limitations uh we would like to see what b splines offer so some of these limitations are actually overcome in b splines okay so just to uh, give you an idea uh then let's say this the the spirit of b spline so what what makes the the b splines different from the bezier curves is that first of all each control point is associated with a unique basis function okay and then as a consequence each point affects the shape of the curve over a range of a parameter values right where the basis function is non zero right so it actually well defines the influence of a control point right and that offers the the flexibility of having local control in the curve okay so this is the broad way of <coughs> defining these b splines right now what we basically mean let me just give you a little more uh, sketch of what was written there so let us say if we define a curve using control <coughs> points like b0 b1 b2 b3 and so on b4 and so on then what happens in the case of these splines if we choose a particular degree of the curve we want to have then we observe that there are segments of the b spline curve right which are influenced by some number or certain number of control points right so for instance there is this segment q0 which is basically influenced by these b0 b1 b2 b3 right so in a way the construction of this is defined by these four control points right similarly q1 
is through B1, B2, B3, B4 and so on. So, it is basically a some sort of a collection of these pieces of the curve right, which are joined at some junction points. Right. So, these are the junction points of these segments and the corresponding parametric value to these junction points which are x naught, x 1, x 2 and so on is what we call as the naught values right? and the whole domain of the parameter value using these x naught, x 1, x 2, x 3 is the naught vector. Okay. So, clearly if let us say if, if you move the point B 1 right, it is going to affect only certain segments of the entire B spline curve which in this case namely be q 0 and q 1. Right. So, immediately we see that there is some sort of a locality of the influence of the control point just the way we do define these. Right. right. If I just want to move the, the point B 1 okay, because the subsequent segments are not going to have B 1 there. So, this is just a sketch, a broad sketch of what is the idea behind having these B splines. Okay, so, so, it is something what we also observed in the subdivision. Right? We subdivided the Bezier curve. Right? So, what was, what, what was in turn happening that segments were being formed right? and the junction point was considered as the point on the curve where the subdivision was taking place. Right. So, then the left part of the junction point could be influenced by the left side of the control points. So, the spirit is similar to what we observed in subdivision. Right. Now, let us let us see the these definition of the the uh, basis functions which would incorporate such features or properties. Okay, so, there are couple of things, there are, there are things like control points and there are also things like naught vector which play a role in the definition of these B splines. Right. So, so, the way these uh, B splines are defined again the definition incorporates some sort of a blending of geometric properties and blending is done through basis functions or the blending functions right so so again the formulation or or, or the way we define is very similar to what we have seen in the case of bezier curve or even cubic splines right so he, here i am using the geometric information coming as the control points represented using capital B right? and these n i k are the basis function. Okay. So, the parameter t could have a range defined let us say between some minimum value of t to maximum value of t and in fact, that is what accounts for the not values or the not vectors which are coming because those x values are nothing but the domain parameter and that is what gets incorporated through t right and this k is actually <coughs> captures the order or the degree of the curve okay so we also wanted this flexibility to be able to decouple the degree of the curve or the order of the curve from the number of control points. Right. So, this k is sort of an independent parameter to us which could facilitate that. Right. So, k is the order of the curve and ranges from 2 to n plus 1.
right. So, the, the entire uh, range of the degrees of the curve which we can obtain is degree of 1 and degree of n which is coming from the number of control points we have. Right. And just to uh, point out there is a small difference in terms of the way we uh, give the index to them is from 1 to n plus 1. So, as opposed to what we had used in the case of Bezier curve 0 to n. Right. This is just for some simplicity. Okay. So, this is how we basically define the B splines. Right. So, we will look at the anatomy of these these N i case because that is what plays a major role. Okay. So, now these N i case are basically defined through uh, a recursive formula which was given by Cox de Boer. It is uh, defined as a as a recursive formulation. These N i k's are basically combinations of N i k minus one here, N i plus one k minus one here. So one order less. So it's a combination of one order less N i N i k's, which we combine here to get these N i k's, right? And the base base case is through when k is equal to one. So, and that basically says that it is a sort of a step function, it is equal to 1 when the parameter t is within the naught values x i and x i plus 1, otherwise it is 0. So, we will see more uh, of it pictorially later on. Okay. And as far as these x i's are concerned, we observe that there is a monotonicity in the definition of these x i's. So, the way we define the the uh, naught values x i is less than or equal to x i plus 1. Okay. So, now just to uh, see some of the properties uh, which are exhibited and which we desire for these piece planes to have is one we assert uh, this partition of unity right so for the non zero values of nik's it sums to 1 and all these nik's are non negative okay and this can also then be used for having some convex hull property for the curve. In fact, this convex hull property is even stronger in the case of B splines. Okay, that is what we would like to observe here. So, what do I mean by that? It basically says that for a B spline curve, if you if you look at the curve of order k degree k minus 1, then a point on the curve lies within the convex hull of k neighboring points okay. and therefore, if you are looking at for all points of the B spline curve, then they must lie within the union of all such convex hulls found by this k neighboring points. Okay, let, let me illustrate that through a diagram. So, what do I mean? Let us say I consider the simplest example where I say k is equal to 2. Right? k is equal to 2 means the degree of the curve I am looking at is 1. And if this are, these are the, the control points, right? then the simplest B spline curve which I am going to have is just the line joining them and that is the curve of degree 1 or order 2. 
right k is equal to 2 right so so the convex hull property here if you if you want to see is basically the curve is lying on the base here or on the b spline polygon itself right. now let's say i increase the order consider k is equal to 3 right so here i'm looking at k neighboring right three neighboring points so this is one set this is another set and so on so this is one set first three points this is another set right and so on and then the entire convex hull is the union of them right so now what you observe is that the convex hull property is stronger compared to what we observed in the Bezier curves where it was considered as the convex hull of the entire Bezier polygon right. So, here if I am having the curve of order 3 then I have a stricter definition of the convex hull which says that the curve is going to lie within this. I have not shown the curve, but any curve defined of the order k is equal to 3 using these these b splines polygon will lie in this right. Now, if I further increase let us say k is equal to 8 right. So, I am talking about 8 neighboring points. So, from here to here this defines one, one series of points and from here to here this defines the other right. Fine. So, now I have basically the entire convex hull which is the union of the two and which in which happens to be the same as the convex hull of all the points. right. So, only when the order goes high right then I have the I have to consider the convex hull of the en entire polygon right ok. Now, next thing is uh, let us try to see more of the evaluation of the n i case right. So, we we looked at the definition of these basis functions that this was the base case and this is the recursive formulation we have right. So, let us consider a particular uh, example what we observe through the definition of these basis functions looking at the support of the not values to the individual n i k s right. So, if I if I look at the support of n i k by support I mean the range where it has non zero values. Then the support is from x i to x i plus k right right and that in fact will in turn determine that the total number of not values is going to be n plus 1 plus k right that you can actually see it let us say if I take an example here where n plus 1 equals to 4. So, I have 4 control points and k is equal to 3 the order is 3 right. So, the basis functions which are going to be considered for the definition of the curve would be n i 3s right the i is changing from 1 to 4 right. So, I have n 1 3 to n 4 3. 
if I see the support of n 1 3 it is from x 1 to x 4. If I see the support of n 4 3 it is from x 4 to x 7. Okay. So, the not values or the not vector which I am considering will go from x 1 to x 7. So, the total number of knots I have is 4 plus 3 which is 7. Right. Okay. So, now the question comes we see some sort of a role of these knots, not values or not vector. Right. So, there are various ways which in which we can consider this not vector x capital X. Right. So, they could be uniform or periodic not values, they could be open or sometimes also called as open uniform or they could be non uniform. Okay. So, let us see examples of each. So, by uniform or periodic not values or not vector, the individual not values are evenly spaced. Okay. So, for example, you have not values defined as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. or it could be minus 0 0.2 to minus 0 0.10 and so on. So, the difference between each the pair of not values is the same. So, they are evenly spaced right. In the case of uh, open not values, they have multiplicity of knots towards the two ends okay, and this multiplicity is equal to the order k of the curve. Okay. And the internal not values are evenly spaced. So, for instance, if I have k is equal to 2, right? so there is a repetition of the knots at this end and at this end. So, there is a multiplicity. Similarly, for k is equal to 3, I have this 3 times repeated and the last value 3 times repeated and the internal knots are <coughs> equally spaced. Right. So, right now we are just looking at what are these implications we will observe maybe later on right okay so and non uniform as the name suggests is going to violate many of those conditions which we had considered in the case of uniform and open right so they are unequal internal spacings and or multiple internal knots So, there could be the difference between the knots is not the same and the you may have a multiplicity even for the internal knots, but all these types of knot vectors which we are seeing have the basic property of the monotonicity increasing, right. they are all monotonically increasing. Right. Okay, so, now let us see a little more uh, carefully about some of the these knot vectors and how, how do they influence the construction. Right. So, in the case of uh, uniform knot vectors, we observe that they yield periodic uniform basis functions with a translation right and that is why they are also called periodic uniform from the point of view of the, that they are equally spaced periodic because they yield 
periodic n i case with a shift right. So, if I take an example where let us say n plus 1 is 4 and the order equals to 3 and let us say I assume that not values I define using considering the positive integer values starting from 0, then I have these not values as 0, 1, 2 till 6. Right. Then the corresponding n i case which I obtain using this not vector, they look like this. Okay. So, what we observe is that this is n 1 3, n 2 3, n 3 3 and n 4 3. So, they are in some sense periodic with some translation factor there. Right. So, uh, let us see more details on it. So, we have considered the example for k is equal to 3 and n plus 1 is equal to 4, 4 control points and this is what our recursive formula is. Right. Now, computationally when you see this is what is happening, right. it is a recursive formulation. So, you have the evaluation of n i 3 coming as combination of n i 2 here and n i plus 1 2 here. Right. I am just expanding that formula nothing more right. and each one of these in turn will expand to this right. So, at the base I have all the n i 1 right. So, this is n i 1, this is n i plus 1 1, this is again n i plus 1 1 and this is n i plus 2 1 and that is what I can determine through the base case right and then they are going to percolate up for the evaluation of higher n i case right. So, it is just a tree formulation. So, now if you want to see diagrammatically if you look at at the base level of the recursive form, so you have all the n i 1s right. So, you have n 1 1, n 2 1 and this is I am talking about with respect to the examples we with the example we have considered right. So, these all n i 1s are nothing but a step function of 1. So, you have this is 1 for the rest of the values of the parameter it is all 0 right. Similarly, n 2 1 has one value here and for the rest it is 0 right. Just by the basic definition of n i case if you remember is right there. So, n i 1 is nothing but 1 0 when t is between x i and x i plus 1 otherwise it is 0 right. So, all you get is a step function ok. So, that is what we will get for all the n i 1s and now when we go a level up we are going to basically use the combinations of them and the span support of these n i k is going to increase. 
right. So, this is what will happen for one level up you are going to have n i 2 which now computes from x 1 to x 3 which is 0 and 2 similarly n 2 2 right. So, these are triangular functions now which is nothing but linear combinations of the step functions which we had in the base level. Right, and if we go one level up, if you go one level up, they are going to use the combinations of these, right? So, which will be what? What kind of functions do you expect? Huh? like a Gaussian. Okay. So, it is a quadratic kind of a function right like a Gaussian. So, that is what you will get right and again the span would increase right. So, from here to here this is what you get evaluated as n 1 2. Right. And what did we say that in the final evaluation of the curve when we use the summation of n i k's, right, the support of the n i k's is from x i to x i plus k. Right. And that is what we see here also. Fine. So, now there is another uh, interesting thing. For the, so, these are the not values which we had considered they are of the type uniform and or periodic right. And remember that we have talked about the property that these n i k's for the parameter of interest which we want to design with the B splines should sum to 1 right this partition of unity right. So, uh, are they summing to 1 for the entire range? No, they are not. So, there is a range of the parameter in this span where it is summing to 1. And that is the range. See in this range they sum to 1. So, that is the support of the parameter which would which we would like to use for constructing the B spline because we want to assert certain properties like convex hub. Right. So, this is sort of a usable parameter range for the B spline. Okay. So, here the summation of n i k is equal to 1. And in fact, so not being able to use let us say all the definitions of n i k's, uh, we can overcome that through the open knot vector. So, open knot vectors actually would enable you to have the use of entire range of the knots for the parameter. Okay. So, if you look at uh, open knot vector, so what did we see? 
we say that there is a repetition or multiplicity of the knots at the ends. Right. So, so this is repeated for k times, this is also repeated for k times. Right. There is a k multiplicity of the value of the knot at the two ends. So, which in fact can uh, make us define the values of all the x i's. Let us say if I consider the first value as 0. So, all these are defined as zeros. Right. So, I am using basically the positive integer values for defining the knots starting at 0. So, if I have x i equal to 0, then I can easily deduce that. So, this is going to happen from 1 to k, right? this is what all these greens are zeros. From k plus 1 to n plus 1, I am going to have as i minus k right? and the last k values are nothing but n minus k plus 2. So, that is easy to figure out. By definition, that I am using k multiplicity of the knot. Right. So, now computing the n i k is using this knot vector would give you a different type of a construction and that it actually enables you to have the use of the entire span of the knots. Right? So, if I have 0, 1, 2, 3 and 0 is repeated on the left hand and 3 is repeated on the right hand, then I am going to use the entire span from 0 to 3, unlike the case of the periodic not values. Right? And there is an, an interesting observation on the open knot vector is that if I have if I have k equals to n plus 1, the order of the curve is the same as the number of control points I have, then I obtain Bezier curve. Right, and that's sort of easy to verify. Right, so if I if I again take a similar definition where I consider the knot values starting at zero with integer increments of one, then the knot vector I would have, let's say, for n plus one equals to Four. So, I am talking about cubic V spline, right, will be this. All these four values here are zeros, and all these four values are ones. Okay. Which means that if I evaluate the basis function using this knot vector, right, which will have the values for let us say all the n i k's for the last basis, right? the root of the recursion would be equal to the same as the Bernstein polynomials. Right? So, n i uh, let us say n 1 4 is 1 minus t to the cube, which is nothing but j 3 0 and similarly n 2 4 is 3 t times 1 minus t square which is nothing but j 3 1 and so on. Right? So, if you if you just do the evaluation of n i case right, for k is equal to 4, 
then you observe that these polynomials are nothing but the Bernstein polynomials and therefore, the resulting curve what you get is the Bezier curve. So, you think you can verify that? And if you look at the plot of these curves, they are going to be like this. Right. So, here if you observe, they all sum to 1. Right. And the effective parameter range which I use is from 0 to 1, which is the entire range of the x values. Right. So, Bezier curve is nothing but a special case of base plot. Right. So, next we what we are going to look at is that. So, basically when we look at the construction of base plans, there are certain control handles. What are these? the control points themselves, right? the degree of the curve which I want to construct k right? and the knots. Okay? So, each one of them is actually playing a role towards the construction of these curves. So, therefore, they also become control handles for changing or constructing a particular shape. Right. So, we will investigate more on this next next time. Okay. Thank you.